Hi guys, so in this video I'm going to show another top 10 uses for your Warhammer 40k sprues. So I've got some sprues, so let's get started. So at number 10, I'm going to make my own bases. Now that I know that sprues can be melted quite easily in the oven, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to use this rubber cake mould, which I know is safe for the oven. And then to make it easier for the sprues to melt, I'm just going to cut them into small little nibbly knobbly bits. Then it's just a case of popping it in the oven on a relatively low heat for about 30 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, and then they come out like this. Obviously I've given them time to dry and cool off, but they melt nicely and form the bottom surround, so they're lovely and smooth. So the underneath's got a few pointy bits, this may be because it needs to be in the oven for a little bit longer, but these can just be easily cut off and then sanded. And there we go, a simple way of turning the sprues, or definitely the nibbly knobbly bits that are cut off from the sprues, into nice clean bases. And then on to number 9, taking a long length of sprue and shaving down the corner bits to make the sprue into a nice cylindrical shape, which can then be cut into three equal parts. Which are then glued together. And then onto my favourite thing of melting sprues. So we just take a sprue that's had the nibbly knobbly bits cut off, hold it over the flame but not too near so it catches fire, which I've done on many occasion, and then we slowly heat the sprue up and then we can pull it apart. And this then forms a nice long thin piece of wire. So we drill holes in the three sprues that are glued together. And then we can poke the sprue that we've just turned into wire into the holes. And then we can use a hot glue gun on the end. Can you guess what this is going to be guys? And one last thing is to put a piece of that long thin wire around all three of these pieces just so it looks like it's keeping them together. And then we can paint it to look like three sticks of dynamite. Ready for my lonely orc to go and cause some havoc. And then to number 8, this is one some of you guys may have seen in the previous video that I've made but I thought it was worth including here for any of those that haven't seen the full build. So in this one I'm going to show how you can make wheels out of melted sprues. So the first thing you need to do is melt the sprues in some acetone. So it takes about 24 hours for the sprues to get really gooey but then we can take that gooey ooey mess and basically just drop it into a mould that we've already made. And then leaving it for another 24 hours to let the acetone evaporate and that ooey gooey sprue stuff starts to firm up again. And when it does, there you go, you're left with some good tyres. Admittedly these have got quite a few bullet holes in them, so I'd only really recommend using these for orc builds. And now to number 7. So not all the sprues come in nice long straight pieces, some of them like this are all hickledy pickledy which gave me the idea it kind of looks like a tree. And that's what I'm going to make from this piece. So the shape's pretty good but obviously it's not quite thick enough at the base so it's just a case of adding some more cut sprues to build out the trunk of the tree. And now it's packed out, I can just go round and shave the edges of all the corners, just smoothing them out, making them rounder, and making some of the end bits pointy, as though it's a very old tree, no leaves, and looking a bit sad for itself. So all these shavings that are coming off, I'm basically just going to glue them back onto the trunk of the tree, and a few other areas, just as this will make some nice filler in between the sprues, which can then be shaved down again. And there we go, it's been given a coat of primer, and now I'm just going to throw on some contrast paint. And there we go, a nice spooky tree for my little fella. And now to number six. And for this one, I want to get some nice long lengths of sprue. and then cut several pieces to the same length. Now I can line them up and glue them together with the larger flat side facing downwards and you'll see why that is in a minute. So with the larger side face down I can now wrap it around this pen nice and easily and then glue the ends together to make a nice cylinder. So I've glued some more sprues together 
which I'm now just basically going to glue onto the end of the tube. If you are new here and you like what I do, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to be informed of all the videos that I produce. So I glued on another layer of the sprues and now I'm just going to use my Dremel tool to round it all off. So this is a pretty cool tool to use as it makes light work of sand in it. There we go, so it's got a pretty rounded end and now I'm just going to smooth off the rest of the tube. So I've stuck on one of the round bits of sprue that you cut off, stuck a bit of wire in it and I'm going to use my glue gun on the end just to make a good old flame. And there we go, one cannon primed in black, ready to do a little bit of dry brushing with some silver. And then once the ground is painted green and the candle's got a little bit of colour, this is how it looks. And for good measure there's a little grot inside, ready to be blown up or blown out. Either way, he doesn't look too happy about it. So to number five, again I'm cutting some sprues into the same length. And these two are going to be glued together and turned into a cylinder. Once it dried I then added another cylinder to the outside of it. And I'm in a good old Dremel. I'm just going to round off the edges. And I'm going to do this to both ends. And then another one of these little round bits that I cut off. So all these nibbly knobbly bits I cut off, I keep them because you never know when you're going to need them again. So I've added some wire at the top and the bottom just to help make this look more like a barrel. And again I'm using some contrast paint just for quickness and ease. But so you guys take a lot more time over your painting. And there we go, there's a little beer barrel. Again, for my little lonely orc. Okay, so to number four, I've taken one of my little tea lights and taken the top off. And I'm going to cut some sprues up and glue them around the outer edge. So I've basically cut these up to a size that would look like bricks. And I'm going to glue a few layers of these going all the way around my little tea light. And then I'm taking a long length of sprue and again shaving off all the edges to make it look relatively round. And I'm going to cut these to make them look like they're sticks on a campfire. So once all the sticks are glued to each other, I can then pull them out to make it easier to paint as I wanted to cover the bulb so it didn't get covered in paint. And again using contrast paints makes it nice and easy to get the logs painted. And then for the stones just simply paint them, black wash and then a little dry brush after. And then the end result is this. I think it's pretty cool because the tea light is a flickering one which really helps with the illusion of a flame being inside. And then on to number three, there's more shaving going on here guys. But again all these little shave bits get kept in a box too. And then out comes my candle to slowly heat it up which can then be bent to 90 degree angles. So again you may have seen this on a recent build but I thought it was worth including here for those who hadn't seen that video. And then this method is great for making some rounded handles which can be used on vehicles or buildings. So for number two I've purposely picked out some sprues that have got lots of nibbly knobbly bits on them which obviously I will be cutting off. And then more shaving to get them rounded so they look like they've been cut off a tree. And that's where the nibbly knobbly bits really help give it that bumpy look. And then I can cut several of them down to the same size. And glue them together. I then add some legs and voila, we've got a table. Which again is painted with contrast paint. 
So I've taken the candles and the bottles that I made in the previous top 10 uses of sprues and put them on here just so my lonely orc can have a nice little candle lit dinner. So now on to number one and this idea was actually sent in by Erbdreg the Austrian orc. So cheers for that one buddy. And it's probably one of the simplest uses I've ever done but I think one of the most effective looking ones. So basically just grab a sprue and then slice down. And then you keep slicing down till you get several of these little curls which can then be cut off. And then take several more sprues and repeat the process. And then they could all be glued onto a base. Start with the taller ones in the centre, working your way round, and then a few smaller, shorter ones at the front. And there you go, simple but effective foliage which can be painted however you feel free. But I'm keeping it nice and simple with some green leaves and a green base. And there you go guys, some more top 10 uses for your Warhammer 40k sprues. So don't throw them away guys, keep them and make things with them. But if you don't feel like you want to make anything with them and you'd like them to go to a good home, I have now got a PO box which is in the description and I would love to have any of your unwanted sprues. And by all means guys, if you have any uses for your sprues, let me know what they are and I might include them in my next video. So I hope you enjoyed the video guys, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave some comments below on what you liked about this video and what you might want to see me do next. I wanted to say a big thank you to all my patrons for helping to support this channel. That really means a lot as I am now investing quite a lot of money into the channel, buying more bits and pieces and some better streaming gear. And you can become a patron for as little as £1 a month and this gives you access to some behind the scenes photos of what I'm currently working on. If you are new here and you like what I do, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to be informed of all the videos that I produce. There is a link to another video on the screen, so give that a click guys and go and see some more of my work. And if you're watching the premiere of this guys, don't forget I am now going to be doing a live stream, so don't forget to go and click on that link too. Okay guys, bye for now.